Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Grzegorz Szczepanowski and I work for Pipesafe for a for last couple of months. Pipesafe is a company founded by Martin Derski and the other owner. Uh, it's a Scala uh, company, basically they push Scala to the uh, commercial market now. Because for three years it was Scala was a research project and now uh, they founded a commercial entity to to push Scala adoption a bit more. And I work as a intern over there and I work on the Scala Grid project. And the idea of, of this project is to bring Scala to Grid. By the way, I, I will say Grid for GWT. Uh, that's how they call it at Google. Uh, I think it's easier to say with than GWT. Um, so yeah, I work on, on, on this project uh, in 2010. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I, and as, a, as an intern in, in a Fanta office where, where Grid is being developed, uh, I work with uh, Lex Poom and other people. And then I continue at Pipesafe and finally this project is getting somewhere. Um, but first I will talk a bit about Scala. And first question, how many people are familiar with Scala? Quite a few. Okay, so it's my first time to, to talk to uh, people that are not familiar with Scala. So if I'm too fast or anything like that, just interrupt and ask questions because uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really used to talking to, to like Java developers. I mean, I, I used to be a Java developer myself, but I switched to Scala for like three years ago, and I, yeah, I just forgot many things. Um, so yes, first introduction to Scala, like a very, uh, from like big picture. Um, so it's an object-oriented and functional uh, language. Uh, it, it's the first language to really fuse those two concepts. You, you had other research languages or even my stream languages like Ocalo uh, that try to, to fuse those two concepts but Scala I think is the first one to, really, to be really successful at this um, challenge. So everything in Scala is an object and you have a full support for functional programming and functions are objects as well in Scala. Um, it is agile and it has agile and concise um, in lightweight syntax, so it feels slightly like a dynamic language, as we will see, uh, because of the conciseness. Uh, but it's full, uh, fully uh, type -safe, statically typed uh, language, and yeah, and it's uh, it's it's performant. It's so since it's statically typed, it's it's performant. Ba basically, it usually has the same performance as with Java. If you, if you compare the same algorithm or anything written in Scala and in Java. Um, yeah, and it obviously it runs on JVM, that's uh, the, most, the best selling point about Scala. Um, so I will give you a few random examples that kind of give you an idea about Scala. So this is uh, just some, this is an example where you create a map and uh, you add a new item to a map and, and then you print, uh, print uh, one of the of items from the map and as you can see it's, it's, you, have a, a special, you have a syntax to, to give pairs of items to a map you have a, a syntax for, for adding a new pair again and you have a method, this is actually a method but uh, Scala supports symbolic methods, so you, have, you can have a, a concise operators for common operations. Um, it's high level, uh, it's, it's high level in a, mostly because of the functional side. Um, so most of the time in, in Scala you express what you want and not how you want to achieve that. Um, so here you have an example where we have a name, it's a, it's a string, and we we want to find out if, if, it's, if, it, if it has an uppercase character. So we call exist method, and we pass a lambda uh, to, to this method, which checks, uh, it's basically a predicate. So for 
Each character here is, is this uh, underscore with a hole is basically, you can think of this, this as an as a argument, a function, and, and what X does is iterates through all characters in the name and calls this predicate, and if it finds out that for one of the characters it returns true, the whole method will return true. So, yeah, so basically you don't care how to iterate over uh, characters in the name string, you just uh, call the method uh, to do that and, and pass your logic that you're interested in. Um, the other thing is, uh, thanks to site inference, uh, you don't need to, to declare types. As I said, the whole type, the type of the whole expression is Boolean, but you never declare it. Compiler is uh, able to figure out uh, this for you. And by the way, it's, it seems like Java is going to have something similar. In A version, there is a lot of talking about lambdas. But, so, actually, from, from what I saw, is Java 8 is borrowing lots of features from Scala, which is actually good because it proves that Scala has lots of good ideas. And lambdas is one of those features that, that Java is going to borrow. Um, the other example of lightweight syntax and kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's mostly about lightweight syntax is uh, how you declare classes. So here you have it oh, on the left hand side, uh, you have a Java version of a like simple bean uh, with two fields and, and the same uh, class declared in Scala. And it's really the same thing. If you compile this to um, bytecode, you, you will get almost the same bytecode. And tricks that Scala is using is that you can define um, default uh, constructor just after your class name, then you can uh, prevent, you can pre prefix um, fields with a val, and uh, sorry, parameters with a val, which make, makes them fields to the class, not only arguments to the constructor, and that's basically it. And so you get fields for free, and and nice uh, constructor syntax here. Um, so now I'll switch to uh, switch back to Scala grid. So yeah, basically, the, as I said before, uh, it's adding support for Scala and grid. So it's not like a separate framework or anything like that. I actually, from the beginning, focus was to not fork grid in any sense. It, it was really a small patch to like kind of inject support for Scala as a second language and not change anything else. Internally, it's very orthogonal to rest of grid architecture. It's just one extension point where I plug in Scala support. And this uh, requires uh, changes both to Scala compiler and Vue compiler. Um, yeah, I should actually mention that I'm mo mostly like a compiler hacker and not a UI hacker. So yeah, it's a, it's a kind of different perspective for me. Um, and I, most of the time I spend hacking here so you guys can, can work with those tools and, and, and yeah, have, have a nice language support. Um, but I'm not really experienced with with, uh, with Wit itself. It was actually kind of surprising to Wit people when I came in that they, they realized I have I've never written even a single Wit application. Uh, and, and this turned out to be um, uh, useful for me because I challenged lots of assumptions. Uh, and, and some of them, I mean, so, some of those challenge, uh, the, some of those assumptions were wrong and, and we were designed to do things internally. And as, as I mentioned, it, it was an uh, inter project at Google, uh, uh, sponsored by Lex Spoon, he was my mom, mentor over there. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I will talk about a few challenges when I was working on this project. I mean, so, so basically I worked uh, for, for two times as an intern, uh, in total, it was six months when I was paid to work on this project uh, full time, and then I, I f for the rest of the time I was working on this as a hobby. Uh, it's an open source project. It's uh, released under Apache license. Um, so why I worked for so long uh, on this project? And 
One of the reasons is that Scala is a very rich language. It has lots of features. And it's not really straightforward to figure out how to teach with to, to support them. Uh, it was a lot of work and lots of thinking. And very often, you run into that one corner case, which kind of destroys the whole idea. And the, the other thing is Scala pushes lots of features to library. It's hard to explain this. Uh, it, during short talk, you have to really work with the language for a while to understand how profound this is. But most, many, uh, Scala, the language, as I said, it has lots of, it, it's a very rich language, but in a sense, it has a few really deep features, which when you combine, um, you, you, you get lots of uh, express, expressive power. But um, the language itself is small, and library is huge. So basically, library is, is implementing lots of features that we have encoded in another language. Uh, yeah, as a library, it's defining Scala. And this is challenging because I cannot kind of like ignore part of the library like we does for Java, li uh, Java standard library. It just takes a subset of the library and they say, OK, this is what we support for a browser. The rest, we don't care. With uh, Scala, it turned out that for most of the stuff, I couldn't kind of ignore because it was essential to write any Scala application. So, yeah, basically, I had to work a lot to, to support whole standard library, apart from I.O., which obviously doesn't make any sense in a browser. Yeah, and the, the last, uh, last point is that the GWT is tied to, to some Java-specific items. And yeah, so my original goal was to not change GWT too much. So that was another challenge. Yeah, I had to introduce lots of ugly hacks to work around this issue. So current status of, of Scala GWT is that uh, we support. I, I say we because I had a few contributors. Um, almost 100% of the language. And I will just uh, highlight that I support trace. I will n not talk about them uh, today, but, but we support them. We support clauses, factions, and pattern matching. Uh, so lots of advanced Scala features are being supported. What, does it, what is it supported? Uh, structural types. Uh, they are not supported because uh, Scala implements them using a Java reflection, and the reflection is not being supported by GWT. So we have to re re architecture whole Scala compiler to support them. But this is a small thing. You, you can easily go away without them. But actually, in, in the GWT uh, context, it would be really nice to support them, but it, it was really happy to hard. So the other uh, thing is um, there is integration with Eclipse. A plugin for Scala, so basically my own fork of a Scala compiler is integrated with a with a plugin, so you can use Eclipse to develop uh, applications for GWT, and with them will work for Scala as well. So not only pure compiler uh, tools are working, but uh, surrounding tools like IDE is working. So basically, the plan is that uh, since we achieved all of that, now I'm trying to push uh, back to Google and check if, if they are going to integrate my patch uh, back to the main uh, with description. We'll see how it goes. So uh, back to Valley. Uh, yes, yeah, so as I said, as I, said um, as I mentioned, I, I'm not a really UI programmer, so I learned Valley like, a couple weeks ago only. Uh, but I knew with architecture uh, well, and I'm experienced with the server side programming in general, so it wasn't that hard. And um, so this is an image taken from Valenburg. Um And usually, I mean, at the moment, you have uh, Java everywhere here. So thanks to GWT, uh, you have Java on the client side. So GWT compiled Java to JavaScript and runs in the browser. And obviously, on the server side, you just run Java and JVM. And what I was trying to find out, and I'm, I was already contacted with the Valium people that tried to integrate Scala. And on the server side, it's very easy, because uh, Scala runs on JVM. It, it mixes and matches with, uh, matches with uh, Java very well. So you just 
run, uh, we'll just write Skylight code and, and you can mix it with, with Java and mix with our libraries and everything and it all works. The more challenging part is the client side where Skylight Bit was needed. So I will talk about the client side mostly and the, there will be a bit of a, a small example of a server side but um, Jonas already talked about this as DevOps. So yeah, there is nothing new here. So I'll start with a demo of application uh, that I created. Um, oh, okay, sorry. So I'm using, uh, oh yeah, so I should mention this uh, as well. So I had a small problem with, uh, maybe not small, but a big problem with IDE. Uh, like two days ago I noticed that Sometimes it freezes when I add bad in jar to taskbar, and I have no clue why. Um, so basically, I had to rework my whole presentation from scratch because, was, uh, yeah, I didn't want to get stuck in the middle and, and, uh, and not be able to continue. So and yeah, it, that was really surprising. I've never seen this before. So and I didn't have time to. Um, to dig into this because I was moving out from Switzerland, moving here, that's not crazy. So I'll be running most of the time from command line, compiling with Ant and, and presenting uh, code in, uh, on slides. I'll show you examples uh, with, without budding, but with Scala at the end, just to show that all this stuff works and for some really weird reason it doesn't work with budding. So, Okay, so let me show the application. So the idea of application, I created a component that allows you to draw on the canvas. It's an HTML5 canvas. Uh, I'm not using uh, valid uh, wrapper around canvas. I'm using with uh, uh, wrapper around canvas and um, um, exposing the whole component uh, to to in as a just drawing component, so you have uh, even handlers implemented and everything. And the other thing about this, so should okay, yeah. So basically, server stores as you can see two columns. Now, server stores. Um, let you draw, let all drawing events, and it broadcasts to all clients. Uh, so that's the idea. So basically, you communicate all drawing events back to the server, server sources, and yeah, broadcast to every client. So that's the, the whole idea. And now I'll walk you through how it's implemented. There will be a lot of code. Um, I don't expect you to understand every line. It's more about to get a feeling how you develop uh, in Scala, like in general, and understand every concept and every uh, line of code. So we will start with a client side component. And um, yes, we basically we, we are uh, defining a class which um, we will. Uh, underneath it, you have a, a canvas, and it all, this is client side, which means it will be compiled with grid, and we are using grid APIs here, and then body to, to glue those together. And um, first thing to notice is that we, uh, in, in Scala, when you can extend uh, interface, and if you want to uh, add more interfaces, you just say with. So this basically extends. And here you can go either class or interface, and then with and class uh, class or interface because we have multi um, editor here is we trace it. Basically, yes, it's it's a syntax for for uh, extending uh, multiple parts. So as the first first thing to notice is that I, I put the code directly in a, a class a definition, which means basically everything that goes between those two brackets, braces, um, uh, is a 
main, the primary constructor in Scala. So everything, our code will be, will be executed every every time you instantiate this class. And uh, I first I declare a, a field val canvas means uh, the same as in Java final type and canvas, right? So basically val is immutable variable. And yes, we create a canvas and we init it and get some context. And the reason why you have val and in Scala for variables you have var is that, and note that those are strict characters, not like in Java you have a special modifier for finals, is because Scala tries to uh, promote use of, of immutable variables, immutable data structures. That's why language kind of, uh, on the language uh, level you have uh, the same code for declaring both variables and, and immutable variables. So, um, yes, this is a, another piece of code which goes into a constructor. So we add a, a, an event handler. This is an event handler executed when you click on a canvas. And the idea is that we uh, get um, X and Y position uh, relative to, to canvas and, um, and we set a flag that we should draw because since the uh, button has been pushed, we are in the drawing mode. And first thing to, there are a couple things to, uh, to notice. And uh, first thing is this word syntax. Uh, so basically we, we are following a method this is a regular method defined in Java, uh, but the, we are kind of not passing an argument, right? There is no uh, curly, the curly background braces around it. It, it actually is. So the idea is uh, that uh, Scala can infer braces. For a single argument, you can leave them out, and Scala will infer it if types match and everything. I mean, if, if the program can type check, you can just leave out those braces, and in cases like, I'm oh, sorry, in cases like this one, it, you can see it's more natural, or you, you, it, it looks nicer because you are kind of passing a block of code to the uh, to the method, right? So it's a nice syntactic trick, and it's really only a syntactic trick, nothing else. So since we have those braces, you you can see you are actually passing the whole thing uh, to to the method. But uh, as I said, this method is a, a method defined by a grid API. And uh, yes, this method expects a mountain handler and not a lambda, because what, what we're passing here is a, is a function. Uh, it's the way you recognize it by, is by this arrow. So basically, you declare a parameter taken by a function arrow and then the function body. Um, so uh, how, how does it work? Because uh, there, 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 might, there might be some magic here. Um, yes, uh, uh, um, sorry, I, I need some water. Can someone? Yeah, because I'm getting really thirsty. Um, so basically, to, to what happens, let me show you again the code. Um, so we have this, and what really happens, what's being really compiled is this piece of code where call to this method is being in inserted. So yeah, we have a call to a grid method, and here we have a, a special method inserted by a compiler. And the way it works is that you declare uh, this method to be the implicit modifier. It's called implicit conversion, thanks a lot. It's called implicit conversion. So the, the idea is basically that you have a, some argument, and um, if if compiler tries to compile and types doesn't match, uh, doesn't type check, it will try to find all methods with implicit modifier in front and see if it can insert those, and then it will uh, type check. So the this is a, a nice trick to uh, kind of enrich. Uh, existing APIs, you can, for, in, in, this, in this case, uh, we can pass lambdas even if original API doesn't pass them. And, and the way it works is if you 
analyze this code, we, we the, the implicit conversion takes the lambda, creates a mouse lamp handler, and implements it by just uh, calling the lambda, right? So, and yeah, this is a straightforward implementation of a handler. Um, yes, and, and the, the handler is, yeah, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so so that's actually the most tricky part of, of uh, I think the, the most tricky slide. Uh, so I would like to ask you if, if you really understand the concept of, of implicit conversion. So the basic idea is if whenever you have a some argument to a method or any place in an expression and if types doesn't match, compiler will try to fix it by by inserting a calls to methods and to know which methods to consider it will just tag through all methods available in the scope with an uh, implicit uh, in front. That's how you inform compiler to consider those and not like all sorts of random methods you, you have defined. So is this concept clear or okay. And yes so Basically, the same trick you use for mouse move. I don't want you to understand everything on this slide. I just wanted to explain basic, uh, basic ideas. How does it work? So, uh, basically, if the flag is set to true that we want to draw, so the, uh, the mouse button is is to push. We capture all coordinates. We and, and the color we are drawing. We create an array. And um, and then we update some variables with, with those values. So basically, we pack everything to one array of strings, and we send it to the server. And we have some mapping. So, so the, the idea here is you create a sequence. Sequence is something like a list in Java. So you create a sequence uh, consisting of those things. The coordinates are doubles, and color is a string. So we have to convert everything to strings, and the way we do this, we call map. And map takes uh, a, a collection, and it will map each element by applying the lambda you are passing. So basically, what happens here is we'll call a two string on each element in a collection, and then if you return the new collection, then we uh, convert it to an array. Um, now let's move to to the server, and um, that's a typical um, setting. You uh, you you get a, a message from a ser server ULDL. It's a Latin specific format, and you extract data from it and update the client side state. And again, I don't want you to to understand everything from this slide, but a few things to notice. Um, so yeah, we iterate over um, over iterator with a syntax with an arrow. And this is the same as the column syntax in, in Java. Uh, it's more general in Scala, but uh, in this particular case, it's the same concept. Um, one thing to notice is that uh, in Scala, you can use equals equals operator for strings, um, and it works the way as uh, equals in Java. So basically, Scala is much more uniform. You have um, equality. Uh, you use the same operator for all values, both objects and, and primitive values and everything. Um, yes, and the rest is not really relevant. So basically, we, we obtain all values and we draw a line. So yes, the the way I choose the drawing is that I capture lots of events and I draw lines, but uh, I, I do this so often that it appears like a curved line. So the thing is trick to define a, a parameter to a primary constructor, and it's uh, a cube, uh, a cube because you declare it with a valve. And what server does is that it has, for, for each canvas, it has a, 
So, so basically, when, when you move your mouse, it doesn't draw immediately on the client side, but first it sends events to the server, server records them, and send back to the client, and only then they are being uh, drawn on the canvas. So the pending clients are uh, basically lines that are not has not been sent to the client yet, but were received from the client, right? So you move a mouse for, for a while, you get the, a queue of, of lines, Line is just a, a it stores just a coordinate of, of like a beginning and ending of the line, and yeah, this is a queue uh, that will be sent to a process and sent to to a client. And lines is a variable that stores all lines that it has been uh, drawn so far, all lines in a his whole history um, of 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 of, 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 a, of line with this component. So the idea is that uh, you have those components and they will broadcast events to each other. So every copy of a canvas for each client, for each user, will receive all events from all other uh, components. And that's how you see, um, that's how you see lines uh, drawn by other clients. So basically you have one global state, everybody is drawing uh, and contributing to the same global uh, history of lines, but with different colors. Um, so to achieve this, um, first we have to define a, a listener on our component on the server side, so other components can register themselves and receive uh, line, lines, our line events. So the way we do this, um, uh, we basically, as, as you saw before, we we are using functions as a uh, event handler, right? So instead of defining an interface with a single method, as uh, this is uh, commonly used in Java, we are just using functions. And so here we we do the same thing. Uh, we are actually declaring a type alias uh, to a function which takes. Uh, Drawing component and sequence of lines and returns unit. Unit is like a void. You just think of this as a void and, and you're fine. So basically, you, you return nothing. And um, so the first thing, this is a source of, of, uh, of line events, and this is, those are lines events. Sequence is again like a, like a list. And, here we are um, defining a type alias, so everywhere in the program we can refer to this type and compiler will expand it to the full type. This is a nice trick to not declare full class or a, uh, like full bone type like a class, but just an alias to, to and, and reuse other types. This is uh, fairly often easier in, in Scala uh, that, that we do that. And, and we, uh, again, Declare a, a field with line listeners as a buffer, uh, which is again like a mutable, mutable list uh, of li line listeners, and initially it's empty. Um, so the way you use those like listeners is in a there is a method called type content where you uh, want to send a state to the server. So a part of it, so sending state in, to the server is uh, hidden here, but I just wanted to highlight how you um, use those listeners. So basically, you iterate over uh, those listeners, and you call um, every listener F stands for for listener here, and so it's F because of the interface function, and then you just call it with a this. The first argument of the function was the source, so we are calling uh, it with this, and, and we are uh, passing pending lines, which is a, a property defined, uh, the field defined before. So, what I wanted to say here is that it's a really nice and lightweight way of, of uh, defining event handlers. So, one of the reasons why JavaScript feels so lightweight is because it has functions. So, in, in JavaScript, most of things um, you do you do with functions, and you can do the same thing in Scala and achieve um, the same kind of feeling of like like in, in US. Um, 
without declaring lots of interface and classes and, 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 and things like that. Um, the, the other part of the application is, uh, uh, I mean, the application itself, so uh, those two classes I, I presented were uh, widgets, client, and server. And the application itself uh, looks like this. Um, it, I guess if you're not used to syntax, it might look a bit weird. So I will walk through all lines here. Um, DC uh, stands for uh, drawing component. I just uh, use the sh short version to, to make it compact and fit, fit into the slide. So basically, when when you in it, your uh, when a client um, starts a session, you call in it, and here. And you create a new drawing component, and the first thing you do, you um, uh, register a line listener um, that will, uh, whenever, sorry, uh, so this line listener will broadcast all line, line events to all other components. So we have a one global state, we go through all components. And we don't want to broadcast to ourselves. We know about lines events already, and and we add uh, our lines to to the pending lines queue of, of each component, and then we request repay, which means we draw for every component. That's how basic. This is uh, basically the whole logic that implements broadcasting. Um, and again, it's very concise. Um, and yeah, and, and really lightweight. Um, then we add the component to, to the list and, and add it to the window. Um, the last uh, part is uh, state. Um, so here we are using one, one trick uh, in Scala, which is uh, Scala defines objects. Uh, it's actually kind of unfortunate to use the object keyword because it's what is another redefinition of, of what does it mean to be an object. Uh, there are lots of definitions already. So here, object means you you have a class which has uh, only one instance. It's basically singleton uh, pattern in Java and code it at the language level. Okay, so what Scala does is we generate a class and we implement inst uh, singleton pattern for you when you declare it with object. And and you can have a method and you can have fields here. Um, this is a way to, um, to achieve the same thing as you have with statics. So Scala doesn't have static members, doesn't have a concept of static. So the way to have something similar to static is to declare an object. And what we do here, we, we have a, uh, again a buffer of a spell of components and one thing to notice is we are using mixing in composition. Uh, the mixing is right, we will implement synchronization for a buffer because this is a global state, so we could get, a corrupt, get into corrupt state if we have multiple requests trying to add the um, components at the same time. So we add the synchronization with a risk keyword, and this is just a, this is an example of mixing in composition in, in Scala. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically how you uh, implement a simple widget in Scala. Um, uh, I was wondering uh, what kind of features I should present. So I, I mentioned traits and mixing composition that they didn't present, uh, but I, I thought that for UR programmers, the most interesting part is about event handling. And, uh, and general structure, how you structure your, your program. So that's, that's what I presented. And now we'll move to more like a, a, to the tool level. So I'll present you the things that didn't work. And that's why I got messed up. And my talk is not super fluid because um, yeah, the whole concept kind of broke uh, two days ago. So sorry for that, but uh, yeah, I'll do some live coding and 
and hopefully I can convince you that this project is somewhere like uh, uh, as close to being usable for 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 normal people and not like the compiler hackers. So what I'm presenting at the moment is a great application. It's very simple. Uh, it's a really like hello world. Uh, I'll explain in a moment what it does. Just add one button, and you get some message coming from, from uh, like a large message. And um, the code is super simple for it. Um, so yeah, you have a uh, um, when you load the application. Um, you create some numbers, a list of numbers, you map those uh, numbers uh, by, again, applying a function which takes every number and converts it to a string and then adds three dots at the end. Um, so you get a, a new list of strings, then we make a, a string of both of this list which, uh, by separating a comma and notice that, again, I'm using this trick that here you could have braces. So that's what Scala does when compiling. So this is exactly the same code. Um, the other thing is that you can leave out that, but I don't want to uh, go into details. And by the way, you're really uh, seeing a Scala ID in action. Um, for a very long time, people didn't want to use Scala because there was no really uh, good support for for Scala, especially in Eclipse. Uh, these days, it's getting much better thanks to mainly TypeSafe. It's conquering a uh, developing of uh, um, Scala plugin. So yeah, the the, the last thing is uh, you you add in a button, and again, we are using this trick of using the lambda and and when sorry, when lambda is being called uh, the message is being displayed and yeah that's that's it and the last thing I wanted to just present for Felix is that if you actually change this code and reload it takes a while it's uh, mostly um, with calls I mean with is quite slow you can see six uh, being added on the screen just to this is a bit late so maybe not everybody else is doing that. Um, so yeah, if you just see five numbers. So basically the, my original plan was to kind of gradually develop the widget uh, and present it live with a with a browser and with a grid uh, dev mode. Um, because as you can see, it works for 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 regular uh, grid projects. Um, and my plan is that once I'm uh, back home in, in work, I'll have a closer look into into this and fix it for Valium because it might be some really weird issue that should be very easy to fix. Um, and yes, so so overall, um, I think that very 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 soon. The, the whole tool set will be ready to, to develop Scala applications both on the server side and on the client side. And uh, on the client side, it's mostly about Scala grid. And as, it's, as I mentioned at the beginning, we support 100, almost 100% 100 of the language. Uh, tools are there. It's just a matter of stabilizing everything and packaging uh, so you can actually install it in Eclipse and, and, and start using it. And I'll share, share the code. Uh, so, so my, my plan is that once I fix the issue with IDE, I'll share the code that you can actually import and and, and play around the, the canvas widget within the clips. And, and then I'll, I'll send uh, an email to Yona or whoever uh, to contact so, so you can access it. I, I hope this will be in, in a couple of days. Um, yeah, so that's, that's everything from me. Um, so this, um, here we have a contact to me. You can follow me on Twitter. I sometimes tweet. Um, here is a 
where the calibrate is being hosted and where I will uh, host the code for this presentation as well. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.